good afternoon to all of you now we are all virtually present here more than 350 participants have registered for this webinar from various states of india and from bangladesh now i request professor tanmay bondopadhyay coordinator of iqsc of our college to start the program thank you madam namaskar namaskar at the very outset of today's webinar organized by the library department and iqsc of our college rabindra mahavidyalaya chapadanga hubli i cordially welcome all the delegates to this program and congratulate the two eminent speakers who gave their consent to share their valuable and exclusive knowledge on today's topic copyright unraveling the confusions of academy the terms copyright intellectual property right etc are familiar terms those comes to our ear often and on nowadays it is recognized that the 21st century belongs to the era of the knowledge economy and the role of the intellect in this context copyright matters of the 21st century highlights about music streaming peer to peer file sharing internet service provider liability ipods or other device levies the use of educational materials and such more many of us have come across the terms copyright notifications and copyright strikes we also know that there is a copyright act 1976 copyright amendment bill 2012 etc but we specially i do have a very little or no knowledge about it in this context uh, i like to confess that the word confusions which is coined in our today's title copyright unraveling the confusions of academy seems very interesting to me i understand that confusions regarding any matter or a concept arises only when we have a very little knowledge or half cooked knowledge about it but personally i don't have any confusions on today's topic because i don't have any idea about the copyright act or laws or rules anything like that so i am with a blank idea or with no knowledge on this topic hence i eagerly wait to listen from two of our learned friends dr udayan bhattacharya professor department of library and information science jadavpur university kolkata and dr sabuj kumar choudhury associate professor department of library and information science university of calcutta now presently i cordially request them and at the same time i request our principal dr prashant bhattacharya to deliver his valuable speech on this occasion sir you are welcome uh can everybody hear me am i audible i mean am i live okay thank you thank you my coordinator sir professor tonmoy bondopadhyay for inviting me to say something on this kind of glorious occasion uh i heartily welcome all my viewers guests participants not only of this country and also those who live outside because pranavi just now has mentioned about so many other participants 
coming from Bangladesh to join us on this particular podium. Uh, to the first of these webinars of kind, uh, though we already had a classroom oriented trial run organized by the Bangla department on uh, 8th June, that is last Monday. But uh, specifically this present one inaugurates a series of a kind as other such webinars are likely to follow from different departments of the college. I once again thank my IQC coordinator, Professor Tonmoy Bondobadhai, and the other member present today, Professor Shujata Bondobadhai, for at all enabling the process. And I congratulate my library staff and the librarians, in particular, Sri Bikash Kumar Haldar, and especially Pranobi, Dr. Pranobi Purel, who is also the convener of this webinar as uh, she has put up real dedication and has shown extraordinary diligence in making this webinar possible. And uh, now I do welcome my two eminent, very eminent speakers, Professor Udayan Bhattacharjo of Jadapur University and uh, Dr. Shobuj Kumar Choudhury of the University of Calcutta and both from their respective departments of library and information science as uh, two very uh, eminent professors. They would enlighten us on the intricate and as the IQC coordinator has pointed out, not so well-known issues uh, related to copyright, its acts, implications, and the consequences they have on our life, academic, social, and also, if possible, uh, I don't know, from the legal angles. Uh, speaking generally, COVID-19 has uh, precipitated an unprecedented crisis in our social and family life. And in this state of the new normal, as people are now calling it, the new normal, uh, to my mind, uh, social distancing has brought about an altogether new kind of closeness, mm -hmm. as this particular webinar testifies to this fact. We are distant, we are sitting distantly from each other, and yet we are quite close, sharing a kind of a platform on the web. And uh, to my mind, human inventiveness uh, keeps on discovering new possibilities along this surprisingly capacious channel of the internet. Uh, we first developed uh, RMV online and Pronobi also is to be credited for this uh, as a primarily teaching learning portal. And uh, then only lately we are resorting to this organizing of webinars as a graded approach towards academic activity that prioritizes students learning as of utmost importance. Copyright is an interesting issue and uh, it is related to the world of books to a layman like me. Uh, whenever I think of copyright, I only think of books, but I know that it is not something which is exclusive to it. Uh, any breach uh, of this act, of this copyright acts, notably through the most common but unethical practice of plagiarism, may lead to serious consequences. And uh, what we really lack is relevant information. So most likely they are to come from our two eminent speakers today, who have kindly consented to be a part of this program today. And these relevant informations may help us develop the required awareness and help us further to maintain academic integrity because we are all teachers and we are basically serving the academia. And uh, I, I do know and I do feel that uh, though I'm the principal, I almost is like a layman and have got nothing special 
to offer on this particular topic. So I want to end it rather quickly. And uh, that would, in a sense, in a very important sense, uh, take the proceedings further and allow the two speakers to speak on this particular subject for whom we are eagerly waiting. But before I end, uh, just one anecdotal reference. I remember I'm a student of English literature and I just remember one interesting fact about Renaissance English history. Uh, as our teachers taught us in the classroom that during the time of the Elizabethan era, which is considered to be the heyday of, of literary fluorescence, Shakespeare and others like him, and when I'm talking of Shakespeare, I'm mainly uh, thinking of his kind of contribution in terms of the dramatic output, not Shakespeare as the poet or Shakespeare as the writer of other kinds of things. Anyway, Shakespeare and uh, there were so many others like him uh, who did not quite enjoy any copyright or any control over their remarkable literary works. Interestingly, the theater managers happen to be the sole proprietors of the textual gems. And I think, had it not been so, the Bard of Avon would have died a richer person. Anyway, uh, this much for today. I ask everyone, all my other participants, listeners, viewers, uh, to, to stay tuned to this program and only hope that as Professor Bhattacharya has been trying to point it out uh, before we really began, but we really tuned in before this program has gone on live, that how uh, the internet is going to be the order of the day and yet it's a possible breach or disruption may mm -hmm. cause serious hampering of the proceedings. Anyway, we only hope that we are not hampered. Uh, the net uh, does not let us suffer, at least on this particular occasion. And I only hope that there is no breach in connection since we are discussing the clean issue of copyright. Uh, so it's over for me. I hand it over to my librarian, who is also the compeer of this present proceeding, Pranobi Madam, to take uh, the, the program further. I sign off. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your valuable speech. And now I request Dr. Rudan Bhattacharya to take the stage. So it's from one Bhattacharya to another Bhattacharya. Now, Dr. Udan Bhattacharya is a professor and former head of the Department of Library and Information Science, Jadavpur University, Kolkata. And he is visiting professor in several universities. He has more than 25 years experience in the field of library and information science. He has more than 70 research articles published nationally and internationally. He has also edited several research volumes and was the chief of librarian of Yadipur University, DLIS. Moreover, he has successfully completed many research projects funded by various organizations. Dr. Bhattacharya is the member of various institutions. He successfully supervised 13 PhD scholars as their research guide. He was the member of executive council and court of Jadapur University. Dr. Bhattacharya is the expert in many committee of different universities. Presently, he is a member of statutory body of different universities. So, so let's over Dr. Rudan Bhattacharya. Sir, please. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bandhapadhyay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Dr. Bhattacharya, Professor Bhattacharya, Principal of Ravindra Mohavidyala Chapadana. Dr. Bandhapadhyay, 
coordinator IQAC of this college. Here participant and very esteemed colleague, teachers of this school, this college, I'm sorry. So as I know, uh, some participants of this webinar are the students of this college and some are very esteemed professionals and some are LIS professionals. So, so is a heterogeneity among the participants. So uh, I thought that I delivered a lecture is a very basic on intellectual property rights. So, and my very good friend, Dr. Shobuj Kumar Choudhury is a well-known expert of this field. He will deliver a in-depth deliberation when the time will come. So in the first half, I have allotted all 30 to 35 minutes to complete my deliberation. I will try to finish within the, within the time limit. So with these few words, I'm going to start my lecture. First, I will uh, clarify the term intellectual property. Actually, intellect, intellectual property is a human intellectual endeavor. Human always thinks about various things and his or her intellectual endeavor is recorded in so many media from the very ancient time. In this juncture, I want to mention the name of Karl Popper, the great philosopher, he coined the term World Tree. World Tree, he divided the existing world in three distinct parts, World 1, World 2 and World 3. World 1 world consists of world of physical objects, World 2 consists of world of mind, World of minds mean mind of scientist, mind of philosopher, etc. And world three is the product of mind. Suppose a book, suppose a theory, these are the world of product of mind. I am intellectual property is the product of mind of scientist, philosopher, and so and so. So, and this particular intellectual product has to be protected, has to be protected by 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 the state for for, uh, uh, for their uh, for protecting their rights of the their uh, of the producers okay such an example in this covid situation now pandemic is going on you know thousands of lab researching thousands of people are on ongoing research as there on to discover one antidote of sars virus when it will be invented, then everybody will try to patent it so that they can produce it, sell it and commercialize can be possible. So actually idea is the champion. Intellectual property is the idea generated by so many human beings for, um, for human, uh, human beings for commercial exploitation. So from the old age, Newton's, Einstein, Heisenberg, they are the champions. They invented so many things, they theorized the globe, the very phenomena of the nature. And though there was no system or patent, copyright, etc., 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 but their ideas are still champion. We are exploiting their knowledge for the development of the human being. There are a few characters of IPS. Non-physical property. This non-physical property means these are non-tangible. Idea. Ideas is not tangible. It protects when it is uh, the knowledge is converted into the product, uh, product that is tangible. So it protects a content creator's interest of idea by assigning and enforcing legal rights to produce and control physical instantation of these ideas. Origin of intellectual property. It has a long history. It has a long history. So far the history is concerned at the time of 
at least seventh, seventh and seventh BC. Am I? You know, Huh? Am I audible? Six. Okay, okay, it's all right. Try it, try it, try it. Actually, it's a serious problem of networks. So, <laughs> I in this regard, I have helped. Okay, pardon, pardon me. Okay, from the very ancient time, 7000 BC, copyright was there. Actually, the cooks, for their recipe, they granted the monopoly to, produce, to cook something for the people of ancient Greece. For more than 600 years, human across the globe have marked objects they made. There is considerable evidence from ownership stamps on pottery and other household items excavated from prehistoric sites in Europe and Asia, indicating that such practices were widespread and common. By the time of Egyptian and Mesopotamian empires, Brickmakers marked their products alongside the name of the ruling king and the owner of the build, building where bricks were used. So it is a common practice. It is a very common practice among the manufacturer of some site to brand their products so that this particular brand will be utilized for the developmental activities and their name will be cited for various reasons. So branding. Branding a product, branding an item invented by a particular group of people or people is demarcated as the champion. These are the intellectual property rights. That means this type of item can be protected by the law of a country. And these are the product of human intellectual endeavor. Industrial models, songs, Symbols, literature, trade, trademark, brand, etc., etc., etc. And this intellectual endeavor are protected by the laws of a particular country, indifferent from. I'll come to the next points. These are the types of intellectual property rights. We can divide it in two parts: industrial property and copyright and related property. Industrial property, there may be so many industrial property, industrial designs, patents, trademarks, trade secrets, geographical indications, layout design of semiconductor, land varieties and farmers, there are so many. And another one is copyright. In this slide, copyright can be on different items, writings, paintings, musical works, audiovisual works, sound recordings, photographic works. Hello. Full screen. Ah, okay. I'm full screen. Full screen. Hello. Okay. Hello. Full screen. Hello. Hello. Patent. First, I am going to discuss about the patent. Patent is an exclusive right granted for inventions, which is a product or a process that provides, in general, a new way of doing something and offers a new technical solution of a problem. To get a patent, technical information about the invention must be disclosed to the public in patent application. Say, just I have just mentioned about the 
about the uh, uh, antidote of SARS virus for this COVID incident. If patent can be in invented by any lab or any person that first be patented in the name of the scientist or, or the lab or institution, that it will be marketized. So patent is a right granted by granted to the organization or person so that he can sell it, uh, uh, product, produce it and market it. And and uh, can we pay, what item can be patented if it has novelty, invented steps, industrial applicability, and patentable subject matters? Next is industrial design. It refers to the right granted to protect original, ornamental, and non functional features of a product, the result of a design activity. The right concerned merely the appearance. Mind it, it is only the appearance, not the product itself. The design of a particular product, what matters in the case of industrial de design. And this design will be protected by the law of a country. And definitely, this is its novelty and individual character, what matters to produce an industrial, de industrial design. Hmm. Say for example, this is an item. Its shape, aesthetics, features, configuration, surface patterns, these matters. So, this is a typical view of a industrial design and it is then should be unique to the manufacturing company, uh, compa company only. No other company can copy it or manufacture it with this same type of design. Next item is trademark. Trademark, what is a trademark? Trademark is a sign or a combination of signs used in trade to identify and distinguish the goods or services of one enterprise from those of another. A trademark owner is a granted exclusive right to use the mark in relation to the good or service with respect to its registered marks. So some words, letters, numericals, pictures, shapes, colors, these are all can be and also the combination of all these can be a trademark. Say for example, it is very famous, Coca-Cola. Just see the writing style of Coca-Cola. The name, it may be a logo, it may be a symbol, McDonald's. The color, these are the trademarks granted to this company so that they can produce with this name, logo, symbol, slogan, shape, etc. Et there are so many, there can be so many parameters. Anyone can be uh, can be granted or um, protected particular land. And there are four main functions of trademark distinguish. These are the uh, features. I am not going to clarify all this because time is stringent. Actually, this is this type of webinar is sometimes very uncom uncomfortable to me because in front of my eyes there are two things one is this powerpoint presentation i uh, and another one is the clicking uh, ticking clock which tells don't talk much without time is stringent and uh, so i i thought you know, uh, actually i am an old fashioned teacher so i need eye contact with my students or the uh, participant of a seminar but there is, is as there is no eye contact I cannot see their expressions, so I am right now. I am helpless. So I am just simply explaining or reading out the powerpoints, what is written or what is in mind. So in this regard, I am absolutely helpless. Another area is geographical indication. Geographical, actually, you might be knowing about this item. Just few 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 years back, rather few months back. There was a very uh, interesting battle between the two states of India, Odisha and West Bengal, about the who is the first, who uh, which state first manufactured or conceptualized the idea of Rasagulla. So, it, so West Bengal was claiming that we are the first manufacturer of Rasagulla. At the same time, Odisha was uh, uh, claiming that they were the first manufacturer. There are battles, and there may be battles, 
about the about a particular product say for example kolapuri chappal kolapuri chappal is manufactured in a particular part of maharashtra so these are the geographical another example we can say that uh, in some part of uh, midnapur one body you might, might be knowing the body the eating object the goyna body that can be patented so these particular bodies produced in particular region of midnapur so there are so many so geographical indication indicates that particular goods originated from a country region or locality and have some special characteristics quality or reputation which are attributable to its place of origin and these are some example of uh, um, geographical indications and the product produced by a particular locality or geographical region now coming to the trade secrets trade secrets it is actually sometimes that these are that uh, i am just giving the example of trade secrets coca cola 25 years old secret formula coca cola they are still producing coca cola and the formula is secret another one is the chocolate chips by cookies fields is the trade secret is the manufacturing process they follow the particular particular manufacturing process and that is absolutely secret to the particular company only listerine the mouth refreshner you might be knowing the name of listerine the mouth freshener trade secret these are the trade secret which are protected by the law of a land now coming to the integrated circuit first i am showing the picture of a integrated circuit this is the integrated circuit you must be knowing you are using computers laptops televisions there are so many integrated circuits in integrated circuits integrated circuits are commonly known as chips layout design means a layout of transistor and other circuitry elements it includes led wires connecting such elements and expressed in any manner in a semiconductor integrated circuit so it is the integrated circuit there are so many items within a circuit there there is a circuitry so so many items are integrated in a single circuit and as a whole that circuit can be produced and it will be manufactured and sold so these are the basic idea of integrated circuits and this integrated circuits the manufacturer will grant it the uh, exclusive production and selling right another very important and uh, the last of this industrial uh, rights is the plant variety plant variety means suppose by uh, uh, you can produce one seed particular seed that is absolutely new to the world of rice and if you produce this in with all its research and ingenuity it will be granted protection by the state so that you can manufacture it and sell your, your rights to produce more so plant variety now it is very important in case, in case of india as a basically india is agricultural uh, mainly agricultural country so uh, th there are so many breeds and nowadays you might be knowing that there are so many breeds of capsicum there are so many breeds of uh, guava that is the piara so these particular breed, breeds are Uh, manufactured or invented by the farmers or in the labs of various uh, institutions say for example vcb that is a vidhan chandra kishu bijara they are testing on the different kinds of breeds if you can produce a new breed it can be it, it is a intellectual property and the rights should be protected by the appropriate authority of the country now coming to the main part of my de deliberation that is the copyright copyright and as exclusive and assignable legal rights given to the originator of a fixed number of year of years to print publish perform film or record literary artistic and musical so it covers so many things original literacy dramatic musical and artistic works cinematographic films sound recordings what can be protected copyright protects only the expression of idea as long as it is original it must be till as long as it is original a work is original when it is created independently mind you independently by skill labor and judgment owners protected areas copied 
are produced in various forms, distributed to the public in copy format, performed in public, broadcasted and used in online, translated into other languages adapted such as novel into screenplay, songs, etc. Actually, copyright doesn't need any formal application like other industrial products. When you pro produce a novel, produce uh, uh, writing a drama, when it, 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 is, it will be published, automatically it will be protected by the copyright law of a country. And the copyright will be granted in your name. There are so many uh, doubts, etc., etc., about the copyright. Who is the owner of the copyright, etc.? I'll, I'll come to this point. Anyway, the right will be protected to the author of this particular product, that is the who created the play, novel, songs, etc. The duration of copyright protection. In India, the lifetime of the author and 60 years counted from the year of date of the author. Actually, um, formally it was 50 years, life of an author and 50 years after application of Vishwa Bharati. Uh, in, uh, hopefully it is 2001, another 10 years is granted by the Indian government. Government. So in India, the life of the author and the 60 years counted from the date of the author. Cinematographic film, sound, recording, posthumously publication, anonymous, pseudonymous publication, it is the 60 years. These are the different act created by government of India at different times, patent tax. Actually, I should mention it before the, uh, before that. Anyway, whatever. So, patent 1970, trademark 1999, copyright 1957, design 2000, so and so. Protection of foreign ones is a very important area. Protection of foreign one means copyright of works of foreign nationals whose Countries are member of convention countries, convention means bond convention, of which India is a signatory, are protected against any infringement of their works in India through the, interna through the International Copyright Order 1999. So, as this, the concerned country and India have the same signatory of that convention, there is the Barney Convention. So, for the interest of foreign nationals will be protected by the law declared in 99. Overlap. Normally, normally overlap is not allowed. India does not allow parallel protection. So, suppose one item, if it is protected by copyright law of this country, it can't be protected by trade uh, another item of uh, uh, industrial items. So parallel protection is not, uh, not allowed in the Indian subcontinent. Ownership. Who is the owner? There is a distinction between the author of a work and the owner of a country. There is a distinction. So we should remember it. What is the the distinct, distinction distinction so the first owner is the author of the work an author means the creator of a literary or dramatic work composer of a musical work person taking the photograph artist in respect of an artistical work producer of a cinematography film there are some confusions this constitution should be mitigated. Suppose I am working in a farm, a company, and I have written a novel. Who is the owner of the copyright? The general rule is that the employer shall have copyright in the work created or authored by an employee in the course of employment unless there happens to be an agreement to the content to the content so owner of the company will hold the 
copyright. So there should not be any confusion regarding this. Action against secondary infringer. Yes, second infringer is liable. Suppose I copied some text, a full book, Xerox it, and X, my friend or my student, sell it. So I am the first infringer and my student the second infringer. She is also liable. And the copyright law, the proceedings will be applicable also to him. So he can't escape from this, from the law. Another confusion. A library possesses a downloaded digital copy of a work. Is it the violation of copyright? See, in fact, many of us are liable to copyright or are, are maybe prosecuted under the purview of copyright law. Why? In, in our house, we have some digital video that may be pirated, some Xerox copy of a book. And sometimes we do it unknowingly, sometimes it is knowing. If the library, there is a concept like fair use. In the name of fair use, in the term of fair use, we cannot do anything. The rule is that if the library have a same copy of non-digital copy, that is the printed version, it can hold one non-digital copy. So in that case, there will be no violation of copyright act. It is perfectly all right for that library. Yes. Is there any ground to defend a claim of infringement? Yes. Number one, disputing the originality. I can question about the originality of the work. Whether the work is original or not, if I prove the work is not original, then there is no case of infringement. No knowledge about the infringement, it happens. Sometimes we do not have any idea that I am doing a wrong. If I establish it, then I can be just, uh, I can say it. No, com not committed for commercial gain. Yes, I can copy it, but I am using it not only for personal use, for my research, for my uh, reporting, etc., etc. So as it is, I am using non-commercial. Non so there should not be any infringement. Okay. Criminal offense. Yes. Sometimes it is criminal offense. Knowingly infringing, definitely the criminal offense. Knowingly removing any rights, marriage information. Knowingly broadcasting to the public without authority. Knowingly making false statements of the purpose of insurance authority. Government, there are rules. As there are rules, so if rules are applicable to the infringer, there are punishment. I am going to the punishment part. Three months to three years jail, fine up to 5,000 to 2 lakhs. Okay, if you violate the copyright or rule of the rule of the country. Now I'm coming to the fair use. These are the some points to be remembered for fair use, personal use research, criticism or reporting of current events, reproduction of work by a teacher or student, reading, recitation of public from published work, storing of work or medium by non-commercial library. So this can be termed as fair use. Do and don'ts. Definitely we can use it, use it with limits. And if you use some part of a document, you must credit, it must give the credit to the author. That is in the bibliographical part, bibliographical reference part, you must cite it. Use in educational purpose only. Use the information in new way. Change the meaning.
format values. Do not make it commercial. Copy and paste. Do not do. Don't do this. It is not permissible by the copyright law. So these are the points I have in my mind. In the discussion section, I, I will be present. If you have any question, we will discuss it. Thank you for patience here. Dr. Shobuj Kumar Choudhury. Dr. Shobuj Kumar Choudhury is an associate professor in the Department of Library and Information Science at the University of Calcutta and the, reci and the recipient of prestigious Shastri Indu Canadian Fellowship 2018-19 as visiting faculty in, in York University, Toronto, Canada and CEU HESP Research Excellence Fellowship 2017-18 at the Center of Law, Ethics and Biomedicine. The Central European University of Budapest, Hungary and worked on patent on medical innovations. He was also selected in the Netherlands Fellowship Program in 2015 and 2017 in Maastricht University, the Netherlands and in Turkey scholarships for postdoctoral research in Ankara University in 2012. Shobuj Kumar Choudhury did his PhD from Jadavpur University on the impacts of IPR on biodiversity and biotechnology in India from Jadavpur University as JRF UGC and a gold medalist in MSc in Marine Science from the University of Calcutta and Associate in Information Science from the National Institute of Science, Communications and Information Resources, CSIR, New Delhi, with the specialization in patent information system. He has many research articles and books published in national and international journals and by foreign publishers. He was also the principal investigator of the UGC research project on copyright completed in 2013. Dr. Choudhury, a former civil servant in West Bengal civil service, he has served as a member of book selection committee, member in the implementation committee for knowledge, for knowledge commission, member in the qualitative and quantitative survey in the Department of Mass Education Extension and Library Services, Government of West Bengal for five years. Now I invite Dr. Shobuj Kumar Choudhury, our second speaker in the last session to deliver his valuable speech. Uh, so thank you so much for having me here. And uh, thank you for your generous introductions, Professor Bandhapadai. Uh, I'm really very thankful to Professor, uh, our principal sir, and the IQC coordinator, Professor Banachi, and especially to the librarian. She first contacted me to talk on the topic, which is very close to my heart. So uh, without uh, adding much ado, let's start. And my dear participants who are also waiting for that, let's I'm sharing my screen. Wait for a while. There is it, some technical snags at my end. It's not being shared properly. Wait for a while.
Is it visible? Hello? Hello, is it visible? Hello, is it visible? Hello, is it visible? Hello? Is sir, it visible? Visible, sir. I'm audible? Audible? Audible. Okay, okay. Okay, so let's start uh, with this uh, very important topic. The modern uh, world, obviously, it was uh, very important not only for these days uh, when the world is moving from this analog world to the digital world. Uh, Uh, first disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer. I cannot give you any legal advice for that. I'm sorry for that. So, uh, Sarah has already discussed about the different aspects of the intellectual property rights. But uh, let me have a little bit recap on this uh, creativity. What is the creativity and how it is actually protecting? Every creativity, since our time immemorial, has been become has actually become the basic backbone of our human civilizations. Without the creativity, we cannot progress, be it in our individual life or in the collective life. So creativity is not everything. We have to protect our creativity. If you uh, do not protect your creativity, certainly somebody will take benefit and will reap benefit out of your creativity. And certainly uh, it will be now very wrong positions. You will have a very wrong foot. Actually, other people, other countries, other organizations will take or reap benefit out of your creativity. So you must protect your creativity. So this is why in every society, including ourselves, and there is a system to or a system of recognition, system of reward to protect your creativity. So intellectually, property rights is one of those important tools. I'm not saying that it is uh, the only tools. In my recent papers, I have said there are many other prizes and uh, rewards could be the alternative options for this pattern or the different forms of IP because there are different other reasons. I'm not going into the detail, but most important thing is we must protect our creativity. So Sarah has already discussed, just I will have a little bit recap for that. Uh, what is uh, IPR? which is actually emanating from human brain or human intellect, that is IP. And the right comes out of your IP is intellectual property rights. And primarily it is divided into two types, industrial property, artistic and literary property. Under the heading of this industrial property, primarily five things comes up. What is this patent design, industrial design, trademark, confidential information or a trade secret, or geographical indications of GI. And the artistic and literary property is a copyright. And the sui generis system is a new systems that we had to uh, comply as we have already uh, annexed with the different and assigned in the different international agreement, primarily the chiefs agreement with this trade related intellectual property rights agreements. And this is why we had to give a new protections of three things. One is a database, Second one is a IC protection, indicated chart protection, and the protections for our plant variety. So these three things are very important. And these uh, three kinds of protections, that is a database, IC, and the plant variety, PBR, absolutely a new types of intellectual property rights. When the intellectual property rights started its journey, uh, almost 600 years back, it was not like that. So let me, uh, before going into the intricacies and understanding the copyrights in detail, let me discuss the uh, few aspects of the academy, what we are facing every day. We already came to know that academy and copyright is umbilically connected, the way a child is connected to her mother or to his mother. So this way we are connected on academicians and academy and the copyright. Who are the stakeholders, faculty members, researchers, students, others, publishers, commercials for profit, academic universities, librarians, of course, and of course, public. Most of the time, 
we have to include them. We forget to include them, this public, public are basically the stakeholders of this academy. We must not forget them. So what do we deal with? We deal with the four kinds of content, primarily four types of content, many other contents. I'm not going to the detail aspects of those. First one is the text. Second one is audio, video, and the image. So every day in every activities, all academy, including our students, researchers, faculties, and any stakeholders, they are dealing more or less, try to visualize you are dealing with the either text, audio, video, or image. Now, the world is moving from analog world to the digital world. So, when the ambience has changed, certainly our priorities have changed. Tools, technology, mechanisms, and modus operandi have been changed over the years and have been gradually changing. And after this COVID-19 crisis, the situation has completely metamorphosed. The world before COVID and the post-COVID will never same again. So, we have to prepare for that. We are already prepared to some extent. So what is happening with this? In the digital world, availability of information, quality of information, privacy is a very important issue in the digital era. And the clarity in the legal regime, sometimes we fear the legal regime. Now, with the ease of the technology, with the ease of accessibility of the technology, what happens? We can easily reproduce anything. We can distribute any digital files within a less than a second, maybe in a nanosecond, we can easily compress it. And many other web specific issues like file sharing, cloud computing, these are the things we are all, in fact, actually surviving with all this. And every day we are using it. In the digital environment, what is the problem? Problem is identify the ownership in a normal analog copyright environment. You can identify who has written the book, who are the publishers, or who are the other persons who have a stake in that particular book. But in the digital environment, identifying the ownerships, then establishing the copyright and enforcing the copyright has become really, really very complex, very complex. And still the modus operandi is evolving. So let me share a few hard facts in academia, what we are facing every day in our academic life. The first, I start with the librarians. Librarians are one of the most important uh, stakeholders in the field of academia. Because uh, in the, as a librarian, some people consider the librarians are the custodians of the library books, the library resources. See this, this person, this librarian from some library in the, some Latin America. And uh, she has been victimized. And uh, she was charged with a criminal because she has photocopied few books and shared with the faculties and the academic persons. Many of us have an account in the social media site, researchkit.net. We share our papers. We love to share our papers just to improve our visibility as well as giving access to our research papers so that other people can also work after my work. So that's a very important platform. But the publishers, they were not happy with the issue, whole issue. They came together and made a coalitions, make, made a coalitions and uh, made a coalition for responsible sharing under this platform. And they shoot all these persons who have shared their articles in the research gate. So this is the coalition for responsible sharing. They came together. Who are not there? You see this, the great, uh, Publishing houses such as Oxford University, Cluer Online, IEEE, Ultra Cluer, Elsevier, all of here. So you see, that's a very uh, difficult situation to share our papers or articles in the researchkit.net. Very recently, just one week back, I came to know in a new when I was uh, browsing this uh, New York Times, I found these very interesting things because. Um, Internet archive, we all know it very well. We can download different kind of con con uh, contents like say, books, audio, video, media, and then images. We can download it from this freely. But publishers have also shoot these Internet archives to take down notice. They have shoot to stop it, stop downloading, and stop giving access to the 
other people you know, freely. They want to charge for it. This is a researcher. He's a biodiversity researcher, it's a Colombian researcher, and he was jailed. Just he has shared his paper, research paper, with his friends over the internet. And this is a very important case study. Many of you are aware of this case study. University of Delhi. Their photocopy service, Rameshwari photocopy service, in the year 2012, this uh, Oxford University, Cambridge University, and Taylor Francis. These three uh, publishing houses came together and showed Delhi University and keep the injunction notice, stop photocopy. Stop photocopy, and it was, uh, uh, after that, it was stopped. But during the last four years, in the year 2016, finally it was settled by the verdict, very important and a landmark party given by Justice End Law that whatever the photocopy we share in the Dell University or any other academic universities or institutions as a photocopy is a part of our teaching learning service. So, and there is another safety valve we'll be discussing in the later part of my lecture. Okay. So they have given a very important and a favorable verdict in favor of academy. Is another another social media. Uh, the same thing is happening with this academia.edu. We use audio video content in the YouTube, in our lectures, in our different kinds of academic activities. Sometimes you have possibly noticed this notice in the YouTube. Sometimes you use pirated operating systems. We give this genuine logo, buy it, or your hard disk will be crashed. And the technologically protected resource, whatever digital things you are in need of that, or uh, which is relevant to you, you will find that most of the cases access is being denied because it's technologically protected. And if you want to access it, software is saying that most of the college is having this endless connectivity. You, you can easily find out, try to download any books or any article from the uh, research journal. You have to download this Adobe Digital, a DRM system, digital uh, rights management systems. Basically, that will stop you to downloading beyond a particular limit. Okay. Very limited downloading. And this is a very interesting case because uh, particularly the scientists from the biological field have uh, serious implications in this field. Uh, with this particular case, the copyright and a monkey selfie, the David Slater was a, a nature and wildlife photographer and he took a photograph in Indonesia and he said the camera mechanically and this female celibate crested macaque. She took that photograph. Okay. And now, what is the point of confusion? What is the bone of contention? Was that at Wikimedia? Wikimedia, they have shared this photograph. Now, this David Slater showed Wikimedia that uh, he was claiming that it was his copyright. But Wikimedia gave a very interesting answer. Federal court, US court has said it copyright is not available to any non humans. Then, after a series of cases, and I in the picture, uh, PETA, PETA is another uh, wildlife organizations, protections for uh, ethical animals kind of things. They came into the picture and finally the, out of the court, there was a settlement and the, any copyright revenue that may be earned by this David Slater will be divided by this PETA, that's wildlife organizations and the David Slater. So that's a very interesting case study that there were serious implications for our academy. In our field, most of the cases, uh, you know, in our society, we believe in the CCP. That is very detrimental, but not only detrimental for our nations, our society, community, or our organizations. It is also very detrimental for myself as an individual. We are lacking ingenuity. Many of us do understand that uh, copyright is a free zone, but unfortunately, is not. So unknowingly, knowingly, we infringe someone's copy, copyright. We must understand that every generation of knowledge is a kind of relays. The knowledge we are developing today actually based on some knowledge. There is a one term 
the no knowledge can be come out of any vacuum so every point or every component of knowledge is actually formed before me and based on that the two test knowledge has been formed by me i said so it's a kind of field test we must understand it our society is a very paradoxical paradoxical when i write a particular book or we write a particular book we want a copyright out of my article out of my book at the same time when the any particular or relevant book is written by somebody else in some corner of the world we want to access all those books freely so there is a open knowledge there is a demand for the open knowledge open access to the knowledge at the same time the same persons myself is actually wanting to protect myself so there is a paradox paradox so i have developed one fundamental dogma out of is the uh, persons who are from the biology background you can easily understand this ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny in the embryological stage all embryo of mammals chickens dogs look alike you just see this analogy and you can find the similarity in the ancient ages we started with a teaching of a book or a learning of a book is actually limited to a particular persons or a group of person previous persons in the middle ages it was stopped by copyright there was a barrier there's a kind of impediment in the knowledge development i right now it's a digital rights management by which you cannot access the digital material so you see we are moving towards the same way now it's a digital chain earlier it was a physical chain now it has become a digital chain so let us think about try to understand let me go uh, dig into the idea of a copy that let's go back to the 600 years back the idea in fact started with this inventions of this printing press by johann gutenberg and then shifted to caxton in uk in the 15th century but you know the stationers company the company of uk they got the royal decree in the 1550 and so basically it was a monopoly and uh, for your understanding and that copyright earlier at the beginning it was not a right for a uh, authors it was a right for the publishers but that royal decree actually left in 1695 and then british parliament did not renew it the in the year of 1710 statute of any it is considered as a landmark it's considered the first copyright law not only the first the most important thing is the most important change the shift toward was that the copyright first time guarantees copyright to the, the authors not the publishers so what is a copyright that has already discussed but copyright is a kind of intellectual property right that is automatically vested on the creator for a limited period of time for creations of artistic and literary photographic musical and cinematographic works so that is the basic definition of the copyright we'll try to understand in the detail step by step so how to get a copyright what is the basic criteria to get a copyright like a patent to get a patent there are few criteria so what are the basic criteria to get a copyright the most important thing is no copyright you must underline these things you should understand this thing no ip beta patent beta design trademark copyright is not given on idea copyright is not given on any idea it is given only to the expressions of idea you may underline it and this expressions of idea could be in any format maybe it a digital format or analog format so expression of idea is the first criteria second one is the original it has to be original third one is a it has to be fixed so three criteria is that there is a expression of idea original and fixed and only then you can think of copyright though it is automatically vested on 
there are different aspects of the copyright philosophical legal and the functional i'm not going into that detail but uh, i'll primarily limited ourselves in our functional aspects of the copyright in the legal aspects primarily we discuss the idea and expression dichotomy for our shake up understanding copyright in the detail a little bit understanding is required will be dealing with this uh, originality which is a part of this philosophical discussions we'll have a brief discussion that you can call it a brief tour over it brief tour so these are the doctrines of originality i said one criteria is original how do you come to know your work is original how the um, copyright examination or the copyright office they can understand your work is original they need to follow some uh, rules on the philosophical basis of their understanding and examinations of that process as india was a part of the british you know so british used to follow this originality principles doctrines of originality sweat of the pro were uh, very minimal very minimal criteria was required to get the copyright suppose when you were best example is a telephone directory you are piling up some names and uh, some telephones uh, numbers or a mobile numbers right now you can make a table or a kind of database right now you are eligible to get this copyright it was being followed by india for many years so it of the pro doctrine where originality criteria was not a big but it was not a very important factor but with some case study with a case study possibly in the year 2012 uh supreme court of india they have said no modicum of creativity that is followed in the united states for judging on examining the originality should be followed here in india what is the substantial creativity is required to get this originality factor and this doctorate the author is basically french term it also follows in the european union and it is very similar to suite of the pro doctrine now india at the present moment india is following the doctrine of the marcher with a uh, you can call it a inclinations towards modicum of creativity so minimal creativity is required to get a copyright time the creativity uh, you know creativity is a very enigmatic word who is creative from our since our childhood days some people says there are many myths are connected some people are creative and some ideas are creative but trust me there is a creative diversity principles we study the creativity and innovation field and it says clearly all people are creative all people are creative and the creativity is a diverse and the creativity is a contextual and there is no ideal kind of creativity and that is the basic premise of understanding of copyright sorry indian copyright act 1957 and india is a member of various international copyright agreements one of those is a most important is a bond convention the rome convention trips agreement universal copyright conventions but with the inception of this trips agreement this universal copyright conventions now it's different i'm very let us see the wipe copyright treaty and the wipe performances and phonogram treaty that is important primarily for the digital materials i'm not going to the detail because uh, you know india was a part of the british colony so east india company first started with the uh, copyright act and the with the british implementation british law implementations in the 1914 indian copyright act and then after independence we got a new one and it was amended six times the last one in 2012 uh, and it has included the drm you understand this one very important things are there copyright is a negative right take from me copyright is a negative right why why is it negative is negative just because because that uh, you know it's stopping you to get the benefit of that particular intellectual property at the same time it's a positive right it's helping you because it's helping the author it's helping to the creator because you are burning your midnight sweat you must get some benefit you must reap some benefit otherwise next time you will not be encouraged to produce something good right so that point of view it's a positive when you are stopping others we call in the law field is a rights of alienability so that's a negative factor 
and then intangible property, exclusive rights that passes our life. Everyone understands. And it comes with uh, some limitations, exceptions, it's a time bound. And another most important thing is a territorial. It is available only within India. And copyright is not a single right. Take from me, copyright is not a single right. It's a bundle of rights. We'll be discussing a little bit. And no copyright is given on idea. These are the basic things. And this entire bundle can be held by one person or maybe divided among multiple parties. So these are the bundle of the rights that makes a copyright. It's a bunch of rights together. What are the rights of there? Uh, rights for reproductions, rights for derivative works, rights for adaptation, rights for translation, rights for communications to public, and the rights for distribution, and the rights for public performance, and rights for public display. All these rights taken together called copyright. It's not a single right. Copyright are two types. One is a economic right, other one is a moral right. Economic right, that you can sell it, you can make some benefit, you can rent it, so we'll be discussing a little bit on the license assigned and the reserve because this is important for our academia. And the moral right, you know, that cannot be transferred. Very recently, there is a fiasco with a Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore songs. So moral right could be a rescuer in that particular context. So these are the moral rights, rights of paternity, rights of integrity. Just try to understand why these moral rights when you are creator, when you are making some creations, this is you, like your child. You are emotionally connected. You and your creation is umbilically connected. That nobody can tear it, nobody can damage it, nobody can distort it. That is the basic premise of the moral right. But the creation has, every creation has economic aspects. And the economic aspects is actually embedded in the economic rights. The rights of reproduction, publish, rental, selling, translation, everything is there. So it's a very important case. Uh, just I wanted to share with you Ekihomi case. Ekihomi means is a behold the man. It's a Latin word for behold the man. In the 1930, it was a painting that painted by some Garcia Martinez, a painter, a famous painter in the Borza in Spain. The first picture was there, the first picture. But uh, due to over the time, you know, the picture was uh, damaged. But it was rescued. It was rescued and restored by some local octogenarian artist in the uh, August 2012. And after that, it was found that it was uh, looking like a crayon monkey, as reported by BBC. And then the artist that Garcia Martinez legal here, they shoot that particular octogenarian a painter of that chapel and finally court has predicted that it should be restored once again he cannot do that so that's a ekihomi case few important terms are important for understanding copyright uh you know whenever we write some article whenever we write some books we are really very excited to sign the copyright transfer form but without understanding that or without knowing the copyright terms, you should not sign over there. Because, because why? Uh, it's kind of LIC, life insurance program. When you are doing some, when you're subscribing any life insurance uh, scheme, there are many small bits of the small forms, but any wrong, God forbid, any wrong happens, it becomes and magnified in a, such a bigger way that finally it says that you are not entitled to get that money back. So that way, transfer of copyright, understanding it, very much important for an academic life. So adaptations and derivative works is quite understandable. That means you are repurposing. Suppose you have written a book, somebody wants to produce a particular you know, drama or a cartoon or a film or a musical works out of your books, that's adaptation for derivative works transformativeness, you can transform it or repurposing, you can compile as a collaging translation, that part is all right. Try to understand, please, this assign, 
what is assigned, what is licensing and reserving the rights. Transferring of copyright, when you are transferring your copyrights, you should be very, very careful what you are transferring. As I already said, there are many rights. What rights you are transferring to the publishers? Assign, if you are assigning anything, any right, that means you are simply selling it out. For licensing, licensing means you are keep, giving some permissions. And licensing can be many a types. Primarily exclusive license or a non-exclusive license. What is that? How to understand the basic difference? Suppose you have published a book with us, some say for a famous organization, famous publishing house. Say, and after one year, when you are not getting that royalty in a sufficient amount or not at all, then certainly every author or every creator wants to change his or her publishers. But when you are trying to talk with the publisher, publisher will say, sir, you have already given this exclusive license to me for publications. So you should keep the non-exclusive license. If you are not happy, you can change it. Transfer of copyright is a very important aspect. And this part is more important in the field of copyright right now in the digital. Suppose you have written a book, suppose you have written a dramatic work or a, any article that is relevant for a particular subject or maybe for the whole humanity or a whole society. One fine day you have discovered that your book has been published, you have written a book in a Bengali. The book has been published in say for a German language. When you were talking to this uh, publisher, he said, sir, you have already given my copyright and subsidiary rights. Subsidiary rights, when you are giving subsidiary rights, that means you are giving all those rights, rights in digital format, right in dramatic or cinematographic or any imagery or any cartoon, any other any other medium other than your books so you have given everything to your publishers so next time you sign copyright transfer form you should be very very careful about the copyright assignment license and subsidiary what rights you are giving to that publisher that's very important permissions is actually licensing sometimes we write some uh, you know phd paper and then phd dissertation thesis and things you need to take some permissions determine if permissions is needed identify the owner identify the rights needed get your permission agreement in writing that's very important now who is author sir has already said so i'm not going to the detail uh international copyright protections i'm going to go into the detail but i will uh, let you know that uh, in the previous last few uh, previous slides i have shown you that india has signed with the various international agreements and with that a part of the agreement is that as i have said copyright is a territorial right so you may ask me sir you have said territorial then how it is registered in other countries no it is not going to be registered it is going to be protected only say for your work will be protected in the us brazil germany and the vice versa because all of the parties of these bond conventions or our own conventions or our treaties. This way, our works and their works will be protected. And all remedies, civil and criminal remedies, will be available. Sir has already discussed, but there is a fallacy. Uh, work for hire, work for hire, there is a fallacy. If it is a part of your job, if you are creating something, creative works as a part of your job, underlining as a part of your job, and only then your uh, employer, your college, university, or your research organizations can claim ownerships of your creative works, other than not. If you have developed on your own, which is not a part of your job, it's your copyright. It's a very important for you, for any of us. You know, copyright for the musical works, sometimes we feel the musical works are very confusing. Uh, the graphical notations, notations that we write, that is actually get the copyright. And the manifestations of that particular, uh, I mean, sorry, notations, when it is embedded, embodied in a particular CD, DVD, or any kind of storage media, that can be copyrighted. Sound recordings. And I know film, these are multiple owners of their producer, primarily the producer, but most important, the cine actors do not have any uh, copyright, only the performing rights, music, sound recordings, and the costume designers, dancers, choreographers, everyone having their own copyrights. It's not, it should not be called as a copyright, it's a performance right. 
Is it necessary today's study your claim to complete? No. But if there is a dispute, you have to prove your work is one. This is why it should be registered. Copyright as enabled, I said it is. Copyright licensable, yes. When you are signing copyright transfer form, you should be very, very careful, which is uh, written in uh, red words. The duration of the license on assigned, how long you are giving license or assigned to the publishers, and what rights you are giving to the publishers, and what will be the territorial extent, and the quantum of royalty, terms regarding revisions, extensions, and terminations. Next time you sign, you should be very, very careful about this. What will be the period of assignment? If it is not mentioned, it is only for five years. Territorial extent, as I said, will be in India. Can you author relinquished copyright? Yes, you can. You can give up your copyright, no problem. And these are the applications fees, you know, very simple. And you can do it online, 500 rupees for your dramatic work music. Literary works for cinematographic, 5,000 sound recording. These are the fees, scheduled fees. Are there. Can I myself an application register for your work directly? Yes, you can do that. You go to the uh, copyright.gov.in, you can do that on your own. Whether published, unpublished works are registered? Yes, you can do that. Unpublished works can also be registered. Computer software? Yes, computer software can also be uh, registered as a part of the literary works, but along with the source code. What is the time? It takes two, three months. First, you apply. And after that, 30 days in mandatory for objections. If objection comes, one more month will be required. And if the objection doesn't come, the next month, I would say within two months, we'll get this for works registered. Terms of copyright, that has already said, is 60 years. 60 years from the last author dies. Okay. And for this, these kinds of work, posthumous work, cinematographic, all kinds of work, 60 years. Performer rights and broadcaster rights is only for 25 years. And what are the safety valve of a copyright? We, uh, we academia, every day we are dealing with the different activities. And most of the time we fear that whether I'm in the right side, the wrong side of the law. So this section 52 of Indian Copyright Act can help you in this regard in a very good way. So use fairly. What are the purpose? For the purpose of research and private study, for criticism of review, for reporting current events in connection with the judicial proceedings, for ourselves, any reproductions of copyrighted works in teaching learning process, making questions by teachers and answers by people. It comes under section 52, publications in newspapers, making maximum three copies to public library, reproductions of unpublished work kept in a museum, all comes under the ambit of the section 52 of Indian Copyright Act 1957. So you are using copyrighted work fairly. But how do you come to know that you are using that copyrighted works fairly? There is a testing. There is a four-factor testing. We call it the penal testing. You can judge on your own purpose, nature, amount, and marketing. What is your purpose? Primarily, it is a fair. I mean, it would be a fair if it's a not commercial. Is it a commercial or non-commercial? You judge it yourself because you are developing something. Nature is a published or unpublished work. Amount. Amount is a very important and a very, you know, uh, very ambiguous term. Because, you know, amount makes a sense here. What amount you are doing here and the marketing. So this test, PNAM testing. Qualitative copying and quantitative copying. I can give you one particular example. In the, you know, uh, very recently, UGC has uh, passed this plagiarism act and they say 10% or within 10% is a good or a fairly good kind of things. Uh, all over the world, it is uh, established that 10% within 10 copying is good. But I can tell you one thing, and take one example. Suppose a particular book uh, of 300 pages and every book, you know, I'm not talking about the textbook, I'm talking about the a reference book. Most of the books there is having a particular a central chapter you can easily understand as an academy. Uh, say that a particular book is having five chapters of that five chapters, maybe third chapter is the central chapter, which is consists of uh, say for uh, 20 pages and the book is total pages is 300. So certainly 
it is less than 10 percent but if you have copied the 20 pages it is unfair because that's a quantitative copy that's a qualitative copy instead of quantitative what 10 percent has said about the UGC and other organizations they are basically a quantitative case and qualitative case and this will be a uh, this will be charged and examined as a qualitative copy and uh, every case in our court of law is judged case by cases. There cannot be any general or sweeping statement for fair use. Whether a particular use of fair or unfair, it will be judged case to case basis. There cannot be any particular example. Particular examples can give you this kind of picture. You can visualize and you can imagine this kind of activities will be fair. So qualitative copying will be that. And there is a fair use evaluator. Uh, there is a one organization, so you can judge it with the lack of the time. I will not be able to show it. Otherwise, you can test on your own. Plagiarism is nothing. Plagiarism, you are actually picking up some material, someone's uh, content, someone's work, and you are not telling where from you took it. So that's a, uh, basically a moral issue. You are not giving any credit. In our UGC Act, you know, the core work will be abstract summary, hypothesis, observation, results, conclusions, and recommendations. If you have copied, or if there is any similarity in the uh, last part of my lecture, uh, I will be discussing a little bit on the similarity. So uh, it will be a huge penalty, a maximum penalty. So copyright infringement is basically a legal issue. And um, plagiarism is a moral issue. Yes, certainly there is some uh, overlapping zone. In the copyright, you know, all rights are reserved. But in the digital world, the things are changing. You should think some alternative formats. There are three spectrums. When you are creating something, you should have an options. You can reserve all those rights with you, or you can share some rights with the humanity, or the human civilization development, for the societal development or you can keep for your own some rights, or you can give it up all of your rights. That's a public domain. It's your choice, it's your material. It's a, like a patent. You can patent it to protect it and get a 20 years protections, or you can keep it with you. You are not sharing with anyone. That's a trade secret or a confidential information. But if there is any violations, government will help you. Government will come to protect you but you are uh, suddenly sharing a trade secret or confidential information, it is not justified. No court will come to help you. So that's kind of things. Many issues are there. So in case of copyright, a new kind of spectrum of rights has come where some rights are deserved. That's a creative commons. Is a Harvard professor. He has developed as an alternative part of a copyright. It's an alternative licensing of the copyright. CC, we call it a CC, where some rights are Reserved Lawrence Lessig, he has developed it. In attributions are there and the copyleft. What is that attribution? Whatever you are taking, give some credit and copy it. Uh, the way you are getting it, you just share it to the humanity. That's a copyleft. One copyright is everything is fixed. Copyleft, you are simply sharing what you have received. So different kinds of licenses are there. You can choose your license the way you want to share. In CCBY license, copy, distribute, display, and the non-commercial. And if you want to share all your activities, that means if you want to share all your rights, that means a public domain, you can make a CC0. It's called a CC0. There are different kinds of licenses are there. You can check into the sites. Due to the lack of the time, I cannot discuss all things in the detail. You see the public domain. The most important myth is that whatever is available in the internet is basically in the public domain, absolutely wrong. Because uh, um, uh, to become a public domain, basic criteria is its IP or a copyright has to be exhausted or expired. Other than legally, it cannot be in the public domain. You should understand it. So counterfeiting one term, counterfeiting is actually selling it a false copy as a genuine copy. Piracy, you are picking up the unauthorized channel and distributions and sale that's a piracy drm new things have come up 
Most of the times when you are trying to access in a digital material, it shows that the access is denied until you give the money or an ID and a password. So it's a kind of technological measure by which it ensures your copyright. It identifies the copyright owner and it implies and enforces the copyright. So that's a technological measure. The DY is a more granularization of the copyright because in a copyright, in earlier you used to use this uh, ISPN or ISSN. Now, say for an article um, in a journal, say for five articles are there, and the five authors have written it. Okay, so five copyrights will be there, or at least the copyright will be shared among the five people. So more granulations are required. This DOI, digital object identifier, is actually a persistent identifier that will be uh, connected with your particular uh, article. And that will identify your ownership and it will keep royalty. So as a uh, academia, many of our colleagues and including myself, many things we post in the Facebook. So we should be very careful before we post anything because uh, they're also very serious about the copyright and the fair use. We should go to the terms and agreement, but most often we, we do not care about when we sign and the clicking and the agreement. We should be careful. When you are sharing, filing and copyright, you should be very careful whether you are on the right side or the wrong side of the law, because in electronically, every of your electronic good step is scrutinized, visible and examined. YouTube, they are also maintaining this uh, I mean, copyright law and fair use, we should be careful about it. <coughs> and the cloud sharing, though they are saying that you are the copyright owner, but uh, many things are still uh, ambiguous. Copyright infringement, when the copyright infringement, how will you prove it? First, you have to prove there's a copyright owner, you are the copyright owner. And in that case, your copyright registrations will be handy. And the second most important is there must have some <coughs> striking similarity. <coughs> and then amount, amount of copy is important. The first most important thing is, is the ownership. Copyright owner, striking similarity and amount. So you can check it, the common error, fiction entries and the crude attempts. Many remedies are there, civil remedies. And criminal remedies. <coughs> Civil remedies, injunction, damage, accounts, and costs. Criminal remedies, that has already discussed, cognizable of means, imprisonment, three years, and relapse. So, finally, so don't copy and get inspired. Thank you. Thank you so much, and thank you for patience here. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much, Dr. Chaudhary, for your nice presentation. Now I start question and session. A numerous questions have been arrived to us from our valuable participants. I have picked some similar important questions to our speaker. Now, first question is to Dr. Bhattacharya from Bibhuti Ranjan Mistra, Odisha. Is it possible to rewrite a book on the same theme, suppose poetry to novel, for which no copyright is there? Sir? <laughs> Say, uh, it is a question of adaptation. It is a, a so uh, Dr. Choudhury already discussed the question of adaptation. Suppose you are adapting. Uh, or transforming a novel into a drama or drama to a novel so you will get the uh, so you, you are only the shared cataloging in the, in the context of cataloging is shared cataloging author suppose you are translate you are adapting a drama of Rabindranath Tagore to another uh, another uh, uh, another uh, mode by another uh, what uh, I can say, the, uh, drama to prose by etc. The author should be main author should be great, both of the Rabindranath Tagore, and adapt for adaptation 
translator etc goes to the, uh, the concerned person so credit will remain to the rabindranath tagore so this is a question of adaptation so the the person who is adapt Sorry. Hello. Hello. Sir, are you audible? Hello. Yes. Yes. Audible to me. Sorry, Sir, might be. Audible. Hello. Hello. Sir, are you audible? Hello. 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 I think there is a network problem. Uh, the next question, I uh, <coughs> the next question uh, to Doctor Shobhut uh, Kumar Shobhuthuri. The question is from uh, Gujarat Harish in Talashia. Make an use of photocopy of the book for the educational purpose in the library. Is it a uh, violation of copyright? Mm, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for asking these questions. I have already answered these questions to the case study of Delhi University. No, it's not a violation of the copyright uh, because uh, if for, uh, anybody tries to sell that particular copy, uh, certainly it would be violations. But if for giving it to the uh, your students or academic community, faculty, students, researchers. For the teaching learning purposes, certainly you are in the right side of the law. So you are not violating. Okay, thank you, sir. The next question is from Onukumar Rao, West Bengal. I have received three questions from on Onukumar Rao from West Bengal. One question, one important question is the future of copyright or does it work in future in digital era? I'm not getting that question. Would you please repeat it again? Yes, yes. Future of copyright or does it work in future in digital era? Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely, it will work because it will work, uh, I can tell you, uh, with a more constraints, with a more, a more uh, stronger format. Because, you know, everywhere I said copyright is a basically, basically product of human mind. And you are expressing, it's not an idea, it's an expression of a era. So that means for expressing a particular idea in any format, you have to burn your midnights well. You have to work day and night. And certainly, be it in an analog format or a digital format, copyright will be there. And this is why from the uh, 2012, we are also complying with the international agreement so that our, so that our laws become very much, uh, you know, uh, digital world friendly so we have enacted the new terms and a new enactment for uh, this inducting this digital rights management obviously it would be more important and it will play a pivotal role and a paramount in the future in the digital copyright thank you sir thank you sir thank you very much uh, now i will end this uh, session thank you Thank you, First thank you all, so much. Uh, vote of thanks. Uh, first of all, I would like to give my heartily vote of thanks to our first research person, Professor Dr. Udayan Bhattacharya for gracing today's webinar. He delivered very practical issues of copyright. Thank you, sir, for your uh, very thought-provoking and interesting speech. Now, I would like to thank our another research person, Dr. Shobhut Kumar Choudhury, for making an excellent presentation and making this webinar a very meaningful and interesting. Thank you, sir. I would like to express our deep gratitude to our principal, Dr. Proshanto Bhattacharya for motivating me to organize this webinar. Thank you, sir. Thank you, principal, sir. I am very thankful for our library team and especially to Sri Vikash Kumar Haldar 
another librarian of our college for background support. And also I am thankful to the coordinator of IQAC of our college, uh, Professor Tonmoy Bondhapadhar for uh, PCS support and guide for conducting webinar. And I would like to thank to Professor Sujata Bondhapadhar, member of IQAC for valuable support to this webinar. I would like to thank to Dr. Sucheta Joy, convener of academic subcommittee and also thankful to Dr. Robiul Alam, uh, convener of IT subcommittee for their active cooperation. I would also thank to all my colleagues and students of Robindra Mohavidala. Last of all, I would like to thank to all participants in this webinar from various states in India and as well as uh, from other countries for their glorious presence. Thank you, thank you, thank you, all of you.